guys, it's Wrongway here and uh, coming at you with another tutorial. And today we are looking at Adobe Animate. And um, you may recognize it as Adobe Flash, that's what it was formerly known as. But uh, Adobe Animate, fantastic piece of software, great for making animations and uh, games and interactives, you name it. So uh, today we're going to focus on tweens, which uh, I'll explain in a second. It's um, one of the ways that Adobe Animate makes our lives easier when we are animating. So we're going to make a new document. It's going to be an ActionScript 3 file. And when that comes up, you'll see that we've got our blank stage. And uh, I'm just going to fill the screen with my stage. And just up here where it says 100%, I'm going to put Fit in Window. Now I've got it nicely filled so that I can see all the, you know, what I want to do here basically in Flash, slash animate. Sometimes I'm going to say Flash because you'll see Flash is still repeated in here a lot. But uh, when I say Flash, I mean animate. Uh, it's hard to lose that after so many years. Anyways, we're going to look at tweens. We're going to look at things we can do with tweens and how we can uh, animate things within animate and I'm going to start with a very simple um, demonstration here of I guess a traditional way of animating I'm just gonna set my little layout here to small screen and the way I do that is in the top right I'm gonna go small screen and that'll reset there we go what I'm gonna do is using the brush tool Okay, so you got your brush tool here. I'm going to change it to black. And uh, down here we've got different things like brush size and uh, shape of the brush. And actually, yeah, that's okay for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a very simple character. In this case, it'll probably be a stick man or similar to a stick man. I'm going to go with a smaller brush. And you'll see that Animate tries to help you out. It, uh, it smooths out your lines after because it is a vector-based program. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Check it out. So I'm making a very simple drawing here of a character. It's pretty tough to draw with the mouse. Normally, I have my Cintiq, my Wacom. But today I'm drawing with the mouse. And I'm just going to draw this guy. Just very random. His eyes are way too big. <laughs> They're like popping out of his head. Okay. Draw some arms on this guy. Ooh, this is so bad. I apologize. And we're almost there. Whoop. Okay, here we go. We got a pretty simple character drawn here, and uh. The next step, once you have an actual drawing of something, obviously you want to be able to fill it in. And uh, there's a multitude of ways of doing this, but probably the easiest and the one that most people are familiar with from other programs is the Paint Bucket Tool. It's right here. And the Paint Bucket Tool in this program works a little different than other programs. Um, still very similar in the fact that I just pick a color and click to fill in. Okay, that still works the same. Um, but it allows us other options and those other options I think are pretty powerful. Um, down here, one of these options are the close gap option. Okay, so if you are an artist who leaves a lot of open lines, meaning you know you don't close your shapes, so let's just use the eraser here and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Let's say I left, I left that open right there. 
that's pretty common when you're drawing. Some people have a style and they leave little open spots. Well, it should, if I tell it to close large gaps, it should be smart enough to know that this is still an object and it'll close that gap there for me automatically. Okay, so that's what that option does. And I feel that's pretty useful. And I'm just gonna fill them all in. Now, just so you know, um, for those of you out there who know Illustrator, uh, usually what I'll do for my animations is I'll draw all my objects with Illustrator and uh, then bring them into Animate after. Um, I just find it so much easier. We do have the pen tool option here for drawing as well. It all depends on what you're familiar with. Anyways, now we've got a character that um, we could potentially animate and turn into something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to move the character across the screen. Okay, um, we could do this the old, I call this the old school traditional way. Um, first of all, what we need to do is select our character. And you'll notice in Animate that he becomes filled with these little dots. That means he's selected. And we're going to convert him to a symbol. And symbols are very important in Animate. Um, it's kind of the way that it uh, handles animated objects. So we're going to make sure this is set to a graphic and I'm going to put the registration dot in the center. I'm just going to call this dude and OK. Now you'll see that he becomes one object that we can move every time we click it. He's one object and he's a symbol. If I want to go and edit him at any point, I can double click him and then I can go back in. You'll see now I'm in the editor mode, which you can tell by the top left. I'm editing dude. And then let's say I want to change his shirt color, for example. You know, I decide halfway through my video, oh, well, it should be purplish, indigo, whatever. Okay, that's how I can do that. And I can go back out into our scene. And uh, now I can move him around. Now, traditionally, if I was talking about, you know, um, the way they used to do animation, the easiest way to animate, okay, if we look at our timeline down here, all of these little blocks are the frames of our animation. Okay, so if you could imagine, each frame is a slide of the movements that are going to happen within our animation. And it's telling us down here, right down here, that it takes 24 of these frames for one second of, um, of animation. So if we wanted it to take him one second to move across this stage, the old way of doing it would be to go in here and put in a keyframe. Okay, a keyframe is very important. That, uh, that's basically telling Animate that something's going to happen with this character. So we're going to insert a keyframe. And then I would maybe move him a little bit. And then I would go insert keyframe once again. Now I'm on the next frame and move him a little bit. And you could see that as this continues, he would move across the stage. But this is a real painful, painful way of doing it. Okay, so here's an easy way. And like I said, Animate has a lot of little tricks that make life easier. Instead, we'll go straight to frame 24 where we want him to end up. And we'll put a keyframe there. Oh, and by the way, I'm just right-clicking the uh, frame for that to come up. Or control-clicking on the Mac. Insert keyframe. And now on that keyframe, we'll just move him to where we want him to end up which is over here. And so he starts there, he ends there, 
and then in between there's nothing happening right now. This is where we need to add what's called a tween. And a tween is just short for in between. And uh, so if I control click anywhere in between those two keyframes, if I uh, right click anywhere in between, I'm going to create a classic tween. And a classic tween means that basically he's just going to move from one spot to another. And it doesn't look realistic, obviously. His legs don't move or anything like that because we haven't built that in. But as you can tell, it's a heck of a lot easier than doing the frame by frame that we would have had to have done traditionally. Okay, so that is a simple classic tween. All right, most basic, I would say, of tweens that you're going to use. Let's look at another one. Okay, I'm going to just start a frame over here for the next one. Next, let's say we want an object to turn into another object. This is kind of cool. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to go to my primitive shapes and I'm going to choose the oval tool and I'm going to just make a circle. All right, so there's a circle. And you can see that it is, you know, just an object right now. It's not a symbol and we don't want it to be a symbol in this case. I'm going to just go to, let's say, frame 48. Uh, should be right there. And I'm going to insert a blank keyframe this time. So I have nothing on that frame. But at 25, I've got the circle. On 48, I'm going to put a rectangle. And I'm going to change its color, too. I'm going to maybe go red. And I'll make a rectangle. Just like that. So frame 25, circle. Frame 48, rectangle, slash, almost a square. In between, I'm going to create a shape tween. And what a shape tween will allow us to do is change from one object to another. So you can do this with anything. All right, anything you draw could be even text, you can change from one shape to another. That's called a shape tween. All right, so let's look at classic tween, shape tween, and now we're going to look at one more type of tween. This one's interesting because there's a lot you can do with it. So once again, I'm going to insert a blank keyframe. This time I'm going to draw a ball. Okay. And let's make it uh, orange. Okay. So there's my ball. Mm, maybe I should put some lines on it. Just so I can show you something a little later on with this ball. Whoops. No fill color. I'll just put two lines on it. I know it doesn't really look like any specific type of ball, but this will help us see what it's doing later. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ball and I'm going to convert it to a symbol. And I'm going to just call it ball. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. There we go. So we have this ball. It is now a symbol. It has two lines on it. Let's say we want this ball to follow a non-linear, non-straight path. With our classic tween back here, it is just a straight path from one keyframe to another. Let's say we want this ball to bounce. And we want it to, you know, follow a path that is not straight. Here's the easiest way to do it. First of all, let's decide how long that bounce is going to take. I'm going to... Uh, I'll go up to 72. Insert keyframe. Alright, so we've got this ball on the stage for that long. Going back to the first keyframe. I'm going to take the pencil tool. Okay, pencil tool. 
and I'm going to draw the path that I want it to take. So I'm drawing this path of the ball bouncing like that. Okay? That's the path I want it to take. So now that I've drawn that, I can double click this line to select all of it. Okay, so this line now becomes selected. And I'm going to cut this path out of this frame. So we don't want it there anymore. We're going to go edit cut and it disappears. Okay. In between or tween, I'm going to control click and I'm going to create a motion tween this time. And you'll notice that it creates a motion layer. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go edit, paste in place. And now we pasted our pencil into there. And the ball is following the path of that pencil shape. Okay, now don't worry about it actually showing up. It won't show up. Okay. But the ball now follows that nonlinear line that we have created in uh, this type of tween. So that's the point of a motion path. Okay, and they are very powerful. There's lots you can do with that. And uh, so there's the sort of the, the basics of it. Now, let's say we want this ball to look a little more authentic. We want it to look like it's actually on that line better. What we can do is we can select our motion path, go to properties, and we can tell the ball to orient to the path. Okay, so that was under Properties, Orient to Path. And now watch what happens with the lines on the ball. You'll see that it actually kind of rolls along that line rather than just going straight up and down. It's a little more realistic, okay, a little more believable. And it looks pretty good, actually. Okay, so those are three tweens that you're going to come across inside Animate and in future tutorials we're going to look at how we can actually use those tweens to make some complicated animations. So stay tuned for that next episode. Um, thanks for watching.